This episode of On The Record is brought to you by Weasler Engineering. Whether you need low power for occasional use or high power for the toughest jobs, Weasler's PTO drive shafts have you covered. To learn more or to find the right PTO for you, visit www.weasler.com. I'm Associate Research Editor Ben Thorpe. Welcome to On The Record. Here's an update on what's currently impacting the ag equipment industry. Dealers, manufacturers, and their customers may be facing Tier 5 emission standards in California by the end of the decade. On November 3rd of last year, the California Air Resources Board held a public workshop to discuss more stringent exhaust standards on all off-road engine power categories. California's Tier 4 standards were adopted in 2004, and the board states on its website that with modern technology, greater reductions in emissions are now feasible beyond the current Tier 4 standards. The board's proposal is tentatively scheduled for consideration in September 2024 and would be implemented in 2028. Some of the standards being considered include a 90% reduction versus Tier 4 in oxides of nitrogen emissions for engines between 75 and 750 horsepower. This would include a 75% reduction in particulate matter emissions in the same range. Both emission types would be reduced about 75% in the 11 to 75 horsepower range and by 50% for the 11 and under and over 750 horsepower ranges. According to a November 2021 report from DieselNet, California's Tier 5 standards will require a similar standard being enacted by the Environmental Protection Agency in order to be effective. The Federal Clean Air Act amendments of 1990 preempt California's authority on controlling emissions on new farm and construction equipment under 175 horsepower. Additionally, since there are no regulations prohibiting non-compliant equipment being brought in from other states, Tier 5 standards raising California equipment costs could see customers leaving the state for equipment purchases. Martha Hennigan, Director of Sales Operations and Marketing at electric tractor manufacturer Solitrack, says the implementation of 2014's Tier 4 final standards created a rush to buy less expensive equipment units before regulations took effect. She also says current California non-emission regulations on equipment up to the zero-turn more range already have landscapers stockpiling equipment. Hennigan says she expects the Tier 5 regulations will positively influence the sales of electric equipment. She doesn't expect Tier 5 standards to bring another 25% increase like Tier 4 standards did, but she says Tier 5's presence will further alert buyers to the advantages of electric farm machinery, saying, Battery technology will be advancing at the same time the diesel prices will be going up. The changes in pricing will benefit the electric-powered units. Hennigan adds that she believes California's non-emissions regulations will soon be raised to the subcompact and compact tractor categories as well, predicting it will happen before 2027. This week's dealers on the move include CNB Operations and Butler Ag Equipment. According to a report from Kiloland, 37 store John Deere dealer CNB Operations plans to move its field support office to Sioux Falls, South Dakota from the Twin Cities area. The report stated CNB Operations will take the top two floors of a nine story building and plans to have 100 or more employees working out of the Sioux Falls office. Butler Ag Equipment, a now 20-store Agco and Kloss dealer based in the Dakotas, recently announced its 20th location in Sydney, Montana, according to a report from Roundup Web. This is Butler's first location in Montana. Now here's Michaela Pockner with the latest from the Technology Corner. Thanks, Ben. Shortline's Crone and Lemkin partnered to create an autonomous machine for forage harvesting and tillage. They're calling it the Combined Powers Autonomous Process Unit. The machine has a cabless diesel electric drive unit capable of up to 170 kilowatts or 230 horsepower to pull various implements. The implement controls the drive unit, a detail the company's considered imperative for optimal results. The implement and the drive unit act as one integrated smart system, communicating with each other using ISOBUS and the tractor implement management. Multiple sensors and artificial intelligence detect obstacles and keep the machine running safely. The operator will control and monitor the combined power system from a mobile device. The operator can transmit jobs and job reports via a communication module and a data exchange hub called the Agri Router. Combined Powers is an exclusively proprietary development from the frame and driveline to the software. It's specifically designed for Crone and Lemkin attachments and automation of forage harvesting and tillage. 
Crone and Lemkin say combined powers past trials in cultivating, plowing, sowing, mowing, tedding, and raking last year. A project manager working on combined power says additional processes will be allowed in the future. The autonomous unit is meant for 24-hour use all year round. It's positioned as a solution to skilled labor shortages in agriculture and as a way to increase farmers' efficiency and productivity. Combined powers will undergo intensive trials in all types of conditions this year, as Crone and Lumpkin seek feedback from farmers and contractors about the units. The companies didn't announce where the trials are happening and did not respond to a request for interview about combined powers by the time of this recording. That's it from today's Technology Corner. Back to you, Ben. Thanks, Michaela. In an investor Q&A session at CNH Industrial's Capital Markets Day, held in February of this year, CEO Scott Wine was asked about the company's dealer optimization for both its ag and construction business and specifically about consolidation incentives. In his response, Wine did acknowledge there was work to be done with New Holland and Case dealers competing in the same areas and that the company has seen consolidation as a result of that competition. He says the company will, quote, support and facilitate but not mandate, end quote, this consolidation. I think the one area to possibly clean up, if, if that's a term I can use, is because of the history of brand competition, there are places where we have New Holland and Case dealers perhaps closer to each other than is necessarily helpful. And so I've, we've already seen consolidation happen in those markets. I think, you know, we're seeing some of our larger, better dealers and really the dealer principles make all the difference in the world. I mean, so it's not as much about where they are if we have the right people. And I think what we're seeing across our network is the, the kind of the cream rises to the top. And, you know, we will continue to support and facilitate that, but not mandate it. One added that overall, he was very pleased with CNH Industrial's distribution networks. Case IH dealer Titan Machinery reported its fiscal year 2022 earnings on March 24th, including a 21% increase in revenue for the year. Total revenue came in at $1.7 billion, up 21% from $1.4 billion in Titan's fiscal year of 2021. Total revenue for the fourth quarter was up 16% to $507 million. Equipment revenue for the year was up 27% to almost $1.3 billion. Parts revenue for the year came in at $267 million, up 9.1% year over year, while service revenue was up 7.8% to $115.6 million. For the fourth quarter, equipment revenue rose 16.7% to $413 million, parts revenue rose 17.3% to $59 million, and service revenue was up 14.3% to $26 million. The rental and other categories saw year-over-year -year declines in both the fourth quarter and the full year 2022, down 1.4 and 12.9 percent, respectively. New equipment inventory for the fiscal year was down $10.9 million to roughly $195 million, while used equipment inventory was down $3.3 million to roughly $110 million. Inventory turns rose in the fourth quarter of 2022 for the fifth quarter in a row to 3.4. As always, we welcome your feedback. You can send comments and story suggestions to kschmidt at lessermedia.com. Until next time, thanks for joining us.